Hi, I'm Reverend Cindy Fuller with InterQuest Church, and today I'd like to talk with you about the Pluto return of the United States. I started two years ago um, putting up installments that would explain what our country's going through as we approach the return of Pluto in our astrological charts. This brings a deep transformation. It, it really asks the country, um, have we accomplished what we needed to do and, and uh, are we ready to go forward at a higher level? And you can watch the installment number one and installment number two, and they were done in uh, 2018. When Spirit asked me to do these, I knew I would be doing 12, and I thought I would get one every month. But after the second one, nothing else came. And this is not coming from my personal information. It's a divine connection moving through me, hopefully being given to you to help. Um, I can honestly say, in the second installment, I talked about finances. And I talked about the winter of 2020. And we've just made it through the winter of 2020. And I did not see the pandemic. I saw financial unraveling. But I did not see the pandemic. I still cannot see the pandemic. So I am looking at it with the eyes that God is giving me. I do simple astrology. I'm sure there are people out there, the professionals, that have the textured nuances that they can share with you. They're deeper and, and more aware. But I see what I see, and so I wanted to share with you simply what we're going through in the next little minute. So I want to focus on uh, the stress that we're under right now. The second house is still being transited by the major planets. I will actually take a photograph of the chart that I'm using for the United States and post it uh, after I post this uh, installment. So, we're under some stress with those, the planets in Capricorn moving through our seventh house of finances. And we are all aware of that. But I want to talk about Mars right now. Mars is a planet to me of action. Um, a lot of astrology looks at it as if it's the planet that can be adventurous and risk-taking and get you into trouble and motivate you. And, and um, someone actually says here, it can be passionate, adventurous, bold, and cruel. Mars is self-serving, aggressive, and for its own self-defense. It's the action department, and they call it the warrior planet. I take a little softer look at Mars. But let me explain to you this. Where Mars is in your personal chart when you are born, it tells you how you take your energy force into the world. Okay, it's very simple. This is your pattern. If Mars is in Gemini within you, you might like to communicate. That might be one of your specialties, taking it out in small little ways that help the whole. But communication may be your thing. And just for your information, when our country was born, Mars was also in Gemini on the seventh house cusp. So who we are as a country, how we motivate, is connecting with each individual, seventh house, each individual connection, um, and keeping communications going, keeping ideas moving among the masses, but not a mass idea, ideas moving among the individual minds of the masses. So, it's not a country that tries to control with mind, it tries to disseminate information. So, that being said, right now, when, a, when Mars is moving through your chart, what it does is it brings you an opportunity to experience energy in that way. So Mars, this motivating energy, right now is in Aquarius, which means in this moment, we are aware of the brotherhood of man. We have a global awareness right now. And this is good because we're going through all the confinement and the restrictions. And this is almost a necessary space for us to be in, in order for us to realize that we're doing this for the greater good. And that gives us contentment at a certain, amount, certain level. Contentment. Mars normally moves through a sign in a month and a half. So it's been clipping through the, the astrological signs this year. It's doing great in Aquarius. On May 13th, the transiting Mars moves into Pisces. And for the United States, what that does is it puts Mars in the third house 
of our chart as a country in Pisces. And it's intercepted, which means that we're going to begin to feel a subtle influence of messaging that we can't even put our finger on. There'll be messaging that points us to victims, heroes, uh, what cost have we paid. Uh, it also gives us an opportunity to look at our spiritual selves. But because it's in the house of communi communication, something is going to be put into our consciousness as a people that's going to make us start thinking about well, how much have we suffered? We, or have we suffered too much? Martyrdom? All these things. And I share this with you just to say, be aware. Be aware of the messaging that's coming to us and through us right now is an outer source moving through the country, and it will only last a month and a half. Once it moves into Aries, this is the part I really want to talk to you about. When Mars moves into Aries, it's its natural home. And this is the warrior position. This is the aggression. This is all about me. Get out of the way. It's about me now. I've been putting up with you guys. Now it's my turn. And we tend to individually push people aside. It's moving into the fourth house of home in our country's chart. This means there may be a wave of energy that is asking us as a country to act with our individual interest only. Agitation may come to us and, and upset or make us think that it was not worthwhile or we were mm, not spoken honestly to or something. The reason that I want to focus on this is that Mars is going to be in Aries for six months not a month and a half. It's going to move forward, it's going to retrograde backwards, and it's going to go forward again. It is in Aries until January, the first part of January 2021. During this time, it's going to set up square with our natural planets in Cancer, our natural Pluto in Capricorn, and the transiting Capricorn planets. Saturn's going to retrograde back into Capricorn. We've got Jupiter and Pluto there. As as this moves toward that square, it's going to be extremely aggressive. It's going to make an energy of needing to stand against authority in some way. As I'm going through this, I'm going to see friends and family, I'm going to see pockets of people acting in an aggressive way. But if I come back to realize this is a temporary transit and it is not who I am, and if we look at our country, this is a temporary transit. It is not who we are. We are not this. We want to be able to navigate this restructuring, which is what it will be, in a way where we are realizing we're going to come to an answer, we're going to come to resolution, but it will be 2021. When Mars moves into Taurus, it gives us that one foot in front of the other. It lets us move in a way that is patient and aligned for the good. Mars in Taurus wants safety. It wants security. It wants uh, all, everybody having food and, and comfort. It wants all these things. And it will, 2021 will move into that space of actually being able to see plans working. Whatever structural plans have been agreed upon will be working. Getting us through the summer... When Mars goes into Aries, June 27th. So, from June 27th through the first week or so in January, we're going to have that fiery energy. And it is going to square in the beginning our um, Venus in Cancer in the seventh house, our Jupiter in Cancer in the seventh house at three and five degrees. So, that's going to happen from the beginning where we may think that what we value isn't being respected, that's our first kick. What we value isn't being respected, boom, and we're going to get upset about it, boom, because it's all about me, boom. Realize it's a transit. It's not a forever thing. It's going to feel like it, but it's not. And then as it moves to square our sun at 13 degrees cancer, it's going to also call into question our country and our country's intentions. And we need to not let it separate us. We need to stay united during this. So I wanted to share this with you as well. I was looking at our chart, our, our country's chart, last night. And, you know, I've seen it all these years. So I was looking at the country's chart, and I... Where's our 
power. I mean, when you look at the chart, when you're looking at a powerful country that's going to be, uh, dominate the world, we need to have some fire. We need to have earth. We need to have some strength. We have a fire ascendant. We have Sagittarius ascendant. We have two earth planets. We have Pluto in Capricorn and Neptune in Virgo. And that's it. The rest is water and air. You don't build power with water and air. What is this about? And then Spirit was showing me. Our seventh house is loaded up with the Cancer and the Gemini of heart. The thing that makes our country strong is the fact that we allow people to think and we allow people to love. We allow thoughts, new ideas, and innovation to be a part of our world. And we allow that, that commitment, that cancer uh, connection and love bond, person to person, individually. It's seventh house individually. We don't ask us all to become one tribe. We allow each one to love the way they love, to think outside the box. We encourage that. And that seems to be the key to our strength. It's not the political regime of the day. It is the fact that we are individuals. And this is what Spirit said. No matter how much a group or mindset tries to take over, it will be dissolved back into individual choice because that is what we were based on and created with. Individual choice. Our individual minds, each person will assess and feel what is true for them. And individual choice is freedom. Freedom is choice. It's all freedom is. It's, I have a right to choose. You have a right to choose. Everyone has a right to choose. That is our freedom. Sometimes we feel like we have a limited offering to choose from, but never is our right to be innovative taken away from us. As long as we don't infringe on the rights of another, that right to be innovative, to try new things, to, to be bold and daring is ours. And that's what makes our country strong. The fact that we respect each person and their right to love and their right to think this is an amazing thing because most other countries that have been founded have been founded primarily based on a strong leadership. Ours is not that way. Ours is a strong heart. Ours is a strong heart. We are a judicial system. That is really how we were founded. But we judge one at a time. We're often wrong. We're not always right. But we attempt to judge one individual at a time, one at a time. Thought, choice, individuals. That's our strength. That's our strength. And right now, as this energy is coming to us, and it's almost like Saturn is bringing a stage for us to use to clear our anxieties, perhaps. But it is an outward energy coming into our home. That's what I want you to hear. It's coming into our home. And for us as individuals for the next six months, what I would ask us to do is own your home. Your home is your thoughts. Your home is your right to choose. Your home is your heart. And know that we are going to get through this. We will, in fact, be redoing our financial system. That's kind of already in motion. We will, in fact, be emerging differently in the world. But it really doesn't matter to us as a country how powerful we are in the world. It matters how powerful we are in our homes, in ourselves, in this world, in our world, in our country. And then, if we can harmoniously come together through all of this, we will be harmonious with the world. Well, that's your Pluto return, installment number three. Um, I hope it was helpful for you and um, I'll let you know as soon as I get installment number four. I still feel there may be 12 of them. And again, let me remind you, the exact uh, Pluto hit isn't until 2022. And then uh, Pluto doesn't leave the conjunction or doesn't move into Aquarius until 2024. So we're going to enjoy this for a few more years. But 
let's, re let's just really know the original intention set forth in the, the, the Bill of Rights, the, the Constitution, everything, the original intentions that were set forth in the Constitution have not yet been fully achieved. We've tried. And if we say, yes, we still want to stay on that trajectory and we do want to live up to and fulfill each one of those, then the next 200 so years, we will flourish. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed. Do hit like and leave me a comment. Thanks, guys.